In this tutorial, we'll learn how to configure Nest.js to handle incoming requests to create a poll, join a poll, and rejoin a poll in the case that, say, a user accidentally closes their browser. We won't flesh out all of the details for creating a poll in a database, but we will learn how to create a polls controller with endpoints. As a reminder, this tutorial has a lovely readme in the Ranker course repo, which will include instructions for cloning, or I would say de-gitting a branch to start along. So you would just find the previous tutorial, which would be branch 01, and you could clone or de-git that, and you would be at the code point that we're starting this lecture. Before coding our endpoints, we're going to go over what a module is in Nest.js, or at least we're going to go over it in a very basic fashion. Nest.js recommends that we use these modules to group applications into related features. And you can see in this lovely diagram they created, you will have a root application module, which we already have and will review. And you would then group features like users, orders, or chats into modules. And those could also have sub modules. The idea of Nest is kind of to build these scalable application features. In our case, we're only going to have a single feature called polls, or a poll is like the thing that you're voting on. It's the topic and the votes towards that topic or question. We will create a couple of other modules later on besides polls, but those will mainly be for getting our application to connect to and work with Redis, or in other words, to like create a client to interact with a Redis database and for creating JSON web tokens but our main feature module will be used for working with polls. I've now opened our VS code or ID of your choice in your case, and I'm gonna, going to open the servers folder and go to the main.ts file where we launch our application. If you look here, you'll see that we have a nest factory for creating our application. And in this application, we sort of mount an app module, which is the root module. We also provide some options for setting up cores, which we'll uh, adjust shortly. If we go into this app module by command clicking it, you'll see that we basically have an empty class called the class module, but more interestingly, we have this module decorator here. We observe that this module can have imports, which we'll go over. It can have controllers, and providers, and it can also have exports, although we're not using that in this module, but we will use exports later on. Let's now talk about what these various fields are in the module decorator. So a provider is a way to provide some sort of functionality to your application. If this sounds vague, that's because it sort of is. Usually it's a way to provide services or application logic to a module. In our application, we'll provide a polls service which handles application logic or passing of data between our REST API endpoints and our data or repository layer, which handles putting resources into the database and retrieving them. Back in our repository, the imports is sort of a way to bring in features of a module which you may have created or maybe which is created by a library. Looking here, you can see that we have this sort of config module and then a for root. What this is, it's a factory to create a module class. And so you could provide some options to this for root. And this config module is how we load environment variables. So for example, this config module dot for root will allow us to inject environment variables from a root dot env file into our application. But if you wanted to, actually let's go back to app.module. If you wanted to use another type of config file or another path to the config file, you would add them into the for root function or factory here. Talking about these imports and this config module, I do actually want to make a little update to main.ts here. You can see that we have hard coded the port 880 into our create nest factory. Now we can actually access 
the config module outside of the application module in the actual app. Or in other words, because we kind of mount the app module in this app, we can actually get access to the config service, which you see that we do here. So what I want to do is actually maybe move this line up above the app and well, actually I guess below the app because we have to have the app. And then what I want to do is actually alter the application to dynamically get the port. The first thing we'll have to do in order to do that is actually add a client port to our end file. So let's go to env and maybe under port, we will add client port. Then back in main.ts, let's now set up the dynamic configuration of the config services new dynamic uh, environment variable. And the way you would do this is by the following. You would say app.enable cores, which is a method on the app. And then you would set the origin similar to the config options here. But instead of passing a cores object, we just kind of access the sub object with origin. And we assign an array of possible client ports. Now these client ports are going to come from the config service. And so I actually need to make sure we access that client port accurately. So back in this file, let's actually go ahead and get the client port by parsing an integer from the config service dot get client. And in fact, it looks like I've made an error. This should be client port. I'll make sure to fix that in the docs. After this, maybe I'll just do a little cleanup here and extract the port neatly in this little section of code. I'll save to remove some new lines with prettier and that should be good to go. If we go back to the app module, we're still talking about modules here. We can also add, if you notice, an exports field, which will be also an array of possible exported features. We're not going to use this right now, but later on we're going to create a Redis module, which will export a client that other modules and services will be able to use. Let's now delete this since we're not using it here. And now on to the main feature of today is controllers. These controllers are going to be used for handling incoming requests from clients and outgoing responses to these clients. In the case of our REST API, the controller will define the paths and request methods along with the parsing of the request bodies into type data structures. These controllers will also serialize the type data structures for outgoing responses into JSON. With that monstrosity of an overview out of the way, let's finally actually create a module. To do so, we're going to create a new folder to group our polls feature. And so that'll be called polls and inside of it, we'll create a file called polls.module.ts, which thinks it is an Angular module. Like I said, Nest.js is kind of like the Angular of backend. In order to create this module, we're going to import it from Nest.js. Furthermore, we're also going to require the config module. So let's just do these imports in one go. So there's the module and the config module. And then we create the config module, or sorry, we create our app module by using something called a decorator. And this will define the module. And then underneath it, we will actually export the class and we'll call this polls module. And we can save and get some formatting. Now, what goes in that module? Remember we had imports and controllers and providers. So first thing for is first, we are going to put in these settings, the config module that we'll import. And this will just allow us to get access to environment variables inside of this polls module, which we'll see later on. So now that we have this polls feature module, we need this module to be known, or we need the app module to be aware of this polls module. So let's save it. And then back in the app module, we can go to controllers and just type polls module. And hopefully your auto import is as nice as mine and then save. 
let's actually now get this application fired up and running. If you haven't already installed everything, you can just run npm install. I also have an mvmrc file, which specifies the version of Node we're using. To run the whole application, first you also want to make sure you have Docker. So maybe check, you know, Docker, just to make sure you have a command available and maybe Docker compose. So we're just going to run npm run start, which is going to run as a reminder in the root package JSON. It's going to run Docker compose the server and the client all at once. That was the client and hopefully we'll see the server up and running, crossing our fingers. <laughs> of course, something is broken. And the thing that is broken <laughs> is that I registered our polls module in the controllers. So sorry to have caused you guys to scream and lose your voices over that. So let's uh, put the polls module up here and hopefully that will fix our problem. And let's go back to the terminal and run npm run start. I'll cross my fingers again. Okay, you see some nice logging showing that the app module was initialized, the polls module, the config host, and that the application is running on port 3000. We're now finally ready to create a controller and not to put a module into the controller <laughs> like we just did. So to do that, let's go to the polls and let's add a new file called polls dot controller and there's this kind of customary naming convention in nest and we'll stick with that and in here i want to add a couple of classes or actually just a class for this controller so we'll say export class polls controller polls controller and we'll close it like this and to define a controller in nest.js again we're going to use this sort of decorator pattern and we're going to use a controller, which we'll import from nest.js common. And we actually just give this a string name, which will sort of result in a path inside of the REST API. And we'll see that later. So instead of just requesting localhost 3000, you'll request localhost port 3000 slash polls to access any of these endpoints. If I save, I'll get rid of these double quotes because <laughs> it imports that way for some reason but our formatter fixes that. Now to define the various endpoints, we're going to add them in the body of the class and we will do this like so. So we'll add a post decorator, which tells Nest that this create function is going to correspond to a post to the polls path. And we need to import post and we need to import post here. So I will import it from nest.js common very good. And then I also, for now, am just going to log that we're in this create endpoint. And this logger also comes from Nest.js. And we will learn more about that logger a little bit later. So everything is imported for now. And I should be able to save this. Great. If we now register this controller inside of the polls module, we should be able to test hitting these endpoints and then see a log of the endpoints inside of these logs here in our console. So let's actually go ahead and do that. And we'll do that by going to polls module. And in controllers, we will type polls controller and use our fancy schmancy auto import. And if we save, you'll see now that our router explorer can kind of see these endpoints. So let's go ahead and open Postman right now. And let's maybe hit these endpoints. So I have already saved some endpoints. And let me see if I can make this a little bigger for you. There we go. And if I go to create poll, I have the base URL, which is localhost 3000. And I'm going to create a poll with just some random data here. And this actually isn't random. This is what the data will look like. And something went wrong. Oh, that's actually with the script. So it's actually okay. So let's go back to the application. And you see that we have a log in create. That's good, that's working. Let's now try the join, which will be at polls slash join. Now, why is it at polls slash join? If we go back to our polls controller, you see the root path of this controller is polls, but this is a post to the polls, then slash join, which we add in the post decorator. Back in Postman, let's send this post request. 
And again, don't worry about this. It's from a script that we're running. You can see that the status comes back just fine. And you see that we're in join. Let's go back to Postman one more time. And I have the rejoin endpoint, which is at polls rejoin. And if I send, we get a status 201 again. And then back in our console, we have rejoin. So that's working. But then the question will arise is how do we actually get any meaningful data from you know Postman or the client or browser in these endpoints? For example, in Postman, you can see if I go to create poll, I had a JSON body with a topic, votes per voter, and a player name. We can do this via a class as well, and we'll follow some of the patterns that you see in the Nest documentation. To do this, I'm going to create a file in polls called DTOs, which stands for data transfer objects. I don't know that you need to name your classes or your types a data transfer object, but they do it in Nest, so I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to import a whole bunch of things and add a whole bunch really fast. So don't worry, I'll explain it and you can pause the video to type it. I have imported some of these utilities for validation from class validator. And I do that because Nest.js supports these out of the box. This first class is going to be a create poll DTO and this will define the shape of the data coming from post polls. First of all, I add a decorator called isString and I say that its length must be between one and 100 characters using these little class validator functions here, or I should say class validator decorators. The topic will be a string. So we define the various fields of these classes or of the incoming body as class fields here. The votes for voter, for example, has to be an integer or a string that parses to an integer between one and five characters or sorry, between the number one and the number five itself. And you can add your player's name, which must only be between one to 25 characters. We also have the poll ID, and this will be returned later when a user creates a poll. So eventually they will actually submit the poll ID they wanna join and their name, which for some reason is inconsistent. So let's just make this 25 characters to match this one here. If we go back to our polls controller, we can add these types. First to create, what we'll do is we will add an at body decorator and make sure you call it the function with the parentheses afterwards and then import it from Nest.js. We'll call the variable create poll DTO and then we will import that from our DTOs file. And we're just going to actually return this create poll DTO to our API for now and be done for today. And we'll do something almost the same for the join. So in join, we'll add this little body and join poll DTO, and then we will just return it. Now this dot join, we're going to return join poll DTO. For this rejoin endpoint, we're actually not going to be extracting data from a body, but rather we will extract data from a JSON web token to verify who the user is and then get them re-logged into the game. And before I forget, let's auto import this join poll DTO and save everything. Let's go ahead and test these endpoints. So let's go back to Postman. Let's go ahead and create a poll and see if it responds back or echoes back basically this. Great, let's join with a player called player two, assuming a poll ID of test. And then let's try rejoin should just log actually so we won't see any data back. Thanks for sticking with me. Next time we'll learn how to create a service which will sort of interact between the controller or the API and our data or repository later.